want to present the case? Yes. Hello, also from my side. Maybe we can have the first slide, please. It's a seven, 87 years old a female patient. Uh, next slide, please. Um, she's very active. She lives nearby in, in, in the A Valley, so-called A Valley, which produces very nice red wines. She has no cognitive impairment, uh, but unfortunately, she cannot uh, climb up the, the wineries uh, to get the best grapes, and she's suffering from dyspnea, New York Heart Association 3 to 4. Uh, she was in good shape two, until two or three years ago, and then this started again. Her past surgical history is very important in that respect. Uh, she, she received a sur surgical aortic valve replacement with a mitral flow size 21 millimeters 10 years ago. Uh, her past medical history is not too, too exciting, arterial hypertension, some pul pulmonary hypertension, systolic pressure, about 45 millimeters of mercury, but what is very important for the risk assessment of the patient, chronic renal failure, creatinine clearance is about 36 ml per minute. Uh, next slide, please. Um, these are the lab findings representing, uh, representing the, the renal failure, is shown here with a creatinine clearance of 36, as alluded to, renal anemia with a hemoglobin of 10.9, but everything else not too specific. Next slide. Uh, that is, is the situation already of the valve. Uh, you can see here a, a TOE image uh, with a mitral valve, more on the left side, and, and then you have the mitral flow, a prosthesis on the right side, more on the middle of the, of the picture, and you can hear, you can, here you can see the, the, thickened, the thickened leaflets and that they are prolapsing a little bit, and you can see on the right side picture a severe aortic regurgitation. So it's not a stenotic valve, it's a degenerated valve, and that led to aortic regurgitation and to the symptoms of the patient. Next slide, please. Um, that is just a, 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 a root shot to, to to look at the anatomy, just with 10 ml, that won't really give you an idea of the AR. It shows you the shape of the mitral flow, uh, which we will see and face during the procedure on fluoroscopy. That will be very important. We will get back to that a little bit later. And next slide, please. That shows you this, uh, this valve. It's a pericardial valve. Uh, with a size of 21, with actually very good hemodynamic characteristics, and it was used frequently in small anatomies, as we have it here, in that case, in this tiny woman. And the problem with this mitral flow valve is that the <coughs> inner, inner diameter is not very large. You can assess that, of course, due to the instructions of the manufacturer. We have this nice uh, app uh, done by the colleagues from London, as shown on the upper part of the picture, and you can do a CT scan. And that gives you an inner diameter for that valve, for this 21 millimeter microfoil valve, of 17 millimeters. So that is one issue. It's a very small valve in a very small anatomy. Next slide, please. And uh, we do have another issue in that patient which is the, the distance of the coronaries to the, to the annulus. That is shown on these pictures on, more on the, on the left side. The distance to the uh, main stem is four millimeters assessed by the CT and to the right coronary artery is 10 millimeters. So we do have problems with this mitral flow implanting a valve and valve in any case for the coronaries, but uh, specifically here, because the distance between the coronaries and the annulus is not very large, we do have an additional uh, obstacle. Next slide, please. That shows you the situation in the groin. Uh, vessel size is okay, not too much calcium, but a lot of kinking on both sides. And next slide, please. So to sum up, uh, the imaging studies showed us this severe aortic regurgitation, as already shown to you uh, on the echocardiography. There is not a severe stenotic uh, characteristic of the valve. The left ventricular ejection fraction is, is absolutely normal with 70%. No coronary artery disease so far. 
The patient is at very high risk and she doesn't have a lot of other options. She, the Euro score is 27, SDS score 6.5. So that the heart team decided together uh, very easily uh, to go for a transfemoral TAVI in, in, in a ZARF, a ZARF implantation approach with a core valve evolute 23 millimeters. Because we uh, already thought that there might be some problems with the coronaries due to the valve, to the characteristics of the valve, due to the anatomy and also due to the uh, low distance of the coronaries to the annulus, we did some precautions. We will do that uh, intervention with coronary protection and we asked our friends from the uh, cardiosurgical department, department Barman, and and Frist Meller to help us and we implanted an ECMO for just for the procedural time to have time enough to do the procedure. Yeah, so thank you very much, George. And, and, and since you, you, know, you were all very experienced core valve users, you know very well the characteristics of mitral flow. Before we proceed, maybe we can ask for the uh, panel's opinion and what and how they will proceed the case, given the fact that this patient had really no surgical option, is and uh, and we had to do the uh, the the, the tablet procedure. And I think um, what uh, would be interesting to us is um, what you would be uh, what you would be suggesting. So Eberhard and uh, George and Nikos. First of all, uh, this is Nikolas. So let me introduce myself. Huh? But uh, no kidding. Um, Hi. I think Hi. You, Hi. <laughs> I think you are embarking in, a, in an amazing series of cases because this, the case you did earlier today was already impressive with a valve and a mitral valve. Um, but for this case of today, I don't think there is a lot of discussion on the operative risk of this patient given her age, her previous surgery, and also the renal insufficiency. So I think, and especially in view of the results oh, yeah. of the striking US pivotal data, I think there is no question that TAVI should be the way to go. But wouldn't you agree that this, even for a TAVI perspective, would be a high-risk procedure? Yes, I, we would agree with you, Nicolas. Uh, we certainly would. And, and this is, a, this is a, a good example, again a good example, where I believe where the STS score uh, does not really truly represent the, the true surgical risk for this patient. And, and that's what we are showing and seeing actually more and more if we discuss and uh, learning from the, from the US ProVAF trial. And that's why, I mean, we don't do very often uh, ECMO cases, but I think in this situation with a four millimeter takeoff of the, of the coronary and the mitral flow, and, and hopefully maybe while we're doing this, uh, you know, maybe in the auditorium, not many people know what the mitral flow characteristics are, but the, the problem here is that you can see the structure inside the pericardial wrap, which makes it very hard and very unpredictable for the coroners. If, 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 the, if the, the struts bend out, um, you know, they simply close the coronaries, and that's why, you know, we really definitely wanted to, uh, to do the protection. And by coronary protection, we mean, and here we, I really see a, 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 a true risk for this patient. What, what, what we mean by that is we have the six French EVU catheter in place with the wire in place and when before we implant the valve we will put the balloon in so in case we have a closure we can pull the balloon back uh, and then do what we have to do. We hope obviously that this is not the case but I think this is a very good um, uh, protection um, in case we need that and here it's for real, it's not just theoretical, it's four millimeters in a mitral flow, so this is, this is going to be a good thing. The other sad thing is that we don't have the Evolute R because it's not approved yet, because here the Evolute R would really be helpful, yeah. right George? I mean we could see how, how the situation is, we could uh, then change the dimension of the valve, we could reposition it depending, but since we don't have it, we took the next best here, that's the Evolute, um, uh, the 23 Evolute, and, uh, and hopefully you bear with us while we do this. And I, we also hope that you agree that in this, in this situation the ECMO uh, is, is really very helpful and gives us a little bit, a uh, little bit rest, a little bit peace while we do this, this procedure, just as a precaution. Maybe, maybe, maybe the, uh, the, the science. If you, if you... Pardon me? 
the sinus. Uh, could we know the can we go back on the slide? With, uh, the takeoff of we the can, coronaries. We we'll, we'll do we'll, we could do an aortic root shot live. Let's don't go to the to the to the to the uh, slides. And can we go to fluoro? We have a pig tail in place. Maybe just a few a few comments what we did so far. We have uh, we have the ECMO in place on the left groin. We will have our access for the for the valve on the right groin. We have the pig tail catheter in place from the from the left radial artery to do this root shot and to, to place the valve. And from the right brachial artery, we inserted the uh, the coronary catheter. And if you look yeah. at the at the at the screen, you can see that the Evo 3.5 is in place, place, and we advance yeah. the wire. Maybe you can you can advance for a second. You can you can see that we have a, a wire in the in the LAD. Which I'm wire sorry. are you using? Um, that's just the regular okay. Galileo, a Galileo floppy wire. Sure, sure. Just, just to come back to uh, I think um, Stephen's point is um, is a key one because there's no question that the leaflets of the mitre flow will extend above the level of takeoff of the left main. So the key determinant of the risk of coronary obstruction here is the width of the sinus at that level. Um, yeah. So I mean, yeah. well, certainly when what we you have to do, you have to. Uh, what you have to do in advance is to, to really look closely at your at your CT angiogram and what you can assume is that we have an inner diameter of 17 millimeters. You, you can assess a, a cube up up to the to the coronary arteries with a CT scan. You can you can put even this figure into your CT scan and then you can get an idea what the distance will be between the implanted valve and the coronary arteries. And that's what we always do in such a case. And we were quite positive that uh, we would have enough distance between the coronary arteries and, and the, yeah. the implanted valve in just a few minutes.